has overcome the lies, the good news of his majesty in his Christ. And it is vital that we raise our tribal flag, the flag of the conquering lion of the tribe of Yehuda. Now, this scepter right here that you're looking at is a scepter that's made of wood with a, a sheet of gold that's beaten to it. On the side of the blade, there is an inscription that reads, The good God, the beloved, dazzling a face like the Atum when it shines, the son of Amun, Nebchepurura, or Nebchepurure, living forever. Above the inscription is a frieze of lotus petals, and on the other side of the blade, are rows of trust and slaughtered bulls. Now we're comparing scepters. You understand to understand the connection with the Black Britain. You understand the Black nobility with the King of Kings, the Ethiopian Hebrews. And let's continue on with Genesis 49 and 10, where it says the Shebet the Shebet, or some would say Shevet, but that's the Ashkenazi um, so-called pronunciation. We're going to pronounce from the, from the Ethiopic Hebrew pronunciation. The Shebet shall not pass, the scepter shall not pass from Yehuda, nor a Mechokek, a Mechokek, a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh he or the one to whom it belongs comes to whom the nations or the peoples but the goyim the nations shall render obedience now this particular scripture in orit ze fitret orit ze lidet chapter 49 and 10 of genesis was not written for a so-called Caucasoid or Caucasian or pale man Messiah. This verse was written for a true Ethiopian Hebrew king and for the king of kings. Now we're going to make that connection as we're making that with the Ethiopian view of Britain. What is the Ethiopian view of Britain and what is true Britain? What are the true roots? What are the black roots of Britain when you understand the black nobility and the black roots of Britain and as a reference the essays or the the essay excuse me by ECOA on the internet black Britain look up essays of ECOA it, it gives some very good um, insights as well as some uh, references to historical documents written by both so-called black and white writers on this particular subject and when you get an overview of all that you can understand why we say the black Britons and that the true black nobility or the true nobility royalty of Europe is royal because of that black Ethiopian Hebrew blood and the Ethiopian Hebrew that black British bloodline that nobility which they treasure you understand which makes them superior to the other so-called white peoples you understand it's because of that link now there is a retrograde a recession that has happened with the reptilian gene which has also weeded itself in there has mixed itself as in the book of Daniel said they shall mix you know they shall mingle themselves with the seed of man with the seed of humanity and that's also another reference right there but the scepter that was stolen from Ethiopia actually was stolen from Egypt that part of Ethiopia because Egypt was a colony of ancient Ethiopia in the time and during the time of Julius Caesar and the whole Cleopatra Mark Anthony Julius Caesar that's why that particular portion of history is often so much referred to this great love story and love triangle and everything else but what was really going on is that scepter that was in Egypt was stolen from there and taken into Europe and and Britain, Bath, England, so forth and so on. Now was returned at the coronation of Kedemawi Haile Selassie, November second, nineteen thirty. It was returned to the Shiloh to Kedemawi Haile Selassie by the Duke of 
Glowchester. Now, let's study this Ethiopian Hebrew or this Ethiopian Solomonic crest or this official coat of arms. This is the official coat of arms and the seal of the Ethiopian Hebrew monarchy. Often they'll just say the Ethiopian monarchy. But the thing that makes Ethiopia special, you understand, is what Amos 9 and 7, the question that Amos 9 and 7 ask. Are you like unto the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? So that is another example in the scriptures of the Ethiopian Hebrew connection. You understand? So when we refer to Kedamawi Halasalas and we refer to holy Ethiopia with that Hebraic Judaic connection, we should state it as it truly is, not just the Ethiopian monarchy, but the Ethiopian Hebrew monarchy. So this is the official coat of arms and the seal of the Ethiopian Hebrew monarchy. Now the armorial bearings, they display the throne of Solomon. Which in truth is, if you study the Kibr Nagesht or the Kibr Nagesht, the Queen of Sheba and only son Menelik, you will recognize that really that throne is really the throne of David. You understand? So many Ethiopians have misrepresented it as the throne of Solomon, but in truth is really a renewal. You understand? The renewal of the kingdom of David in Ethiopia. This is the testimony of the. Kibra Nagesht, and we're holding to that particular testimony. But the armorial bearings that display the throne of David through Solomon, you understand, through that seed of Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, supported by two angels. The angel to the right of the throne bears the sword of state and the scales of justice, symbolizing the role of the Nagusha Nagesht or the Emperor as supreme soldier and supreme judge. The angel to the left of the throne bears the imperial scepter symbolizing the sovereignty of the monarch. The Lion of Judah stands before the throne and the arms are draped under an imperial red canopy surrounded or really surmounted by the imperial crown. Below the Lion of Judah appears the words Moa Anbesa Ze'im Negeda Yehuda conquering or victorious lion from in the tribe of Judah or conquering Lion of the tribe of Judah. Now the title Conquering Lion of the Tribe of Judah is often attached rightly to the King of Kings name, to Kedamawi Haile Selassie's name. But now there are some that say, and I've put out the information even from the so-called royal family, that it is not the title of the emperor himself. But we disagree based on the evidence and the factual information. It is the title of the emperor itself because this is prophetic. Now Prince Asfawosin Asarate had noted this. The phrase conquering line of the tribe of Judah has never been the title of Ethiopian monarchs. Now if that is true that conquering line of the tribe of Judah has never been the title of Ethiopian monarchs then why is that a title of Kedamawi Haile Selassie? See, here's the connection. The connection is Genesis 49. The connection is what happened in 1930. The connection is the returning of the scepter to the, its rightful ruler to the Shiloh. You understand? From Ephraim, you understand? To Yehuda. You understand? Now, rather, they would say that the words, line of the tribe of Judah, hath prevailed refers to Genesis chapter 49 and 9. But if we go to the particular prophecy in Genesis chapter 49 and we begin at verse, let's begin at verse 8 where it says Judah, Yehuda, 
Thee shall thy brethren praise. This is why true Rastafari and true Ethiopian Christians, true Ethiopian Hebrews, we praise Edomawi Haile Selassie. Now don't get this, as they say, twisted. We praise the righteous man. This is what the Bible teaches. Some say we praise nobody but God, but they're not reading their scriptures. You understand? Praise is worthy for the righteous. Uh, millions of Christians throughout the world, your imperial majesty, will regard you as the reincarnation of Jesus Christ. has overcome the lies, the good news of his majesty in his Christ, and it is vital that we raise our tribal flag, the flag of the conquering lion of the tribe of Yehuda.